Pre-Calc Chapter 11, Section 2, Part A. So this is two parts. first part, we're just going to look at some techniques on how to find the limits um, algebraically. So they're dividing out and rationalizing techniques. So yesterday we talked about how to find limits of these rational functions but just by substituting in a number. So the limit as x approaches 2, if we put 2 into the function and get a value out, that is the limit. But we have problems like this where when we have 2 and we plug it into the function, we get a 0 in the denominator. We know that method's not going to work right away. So we can look at some other methods or some techniques. So for this problem, we could rewrite this a little bit and try factoring a little bit. So the numerator here is going to factor to x minus 2 times x plus 4. And the denominator is x minus 2. And so we can reduce this fraction, x minus 2 or x minus 2 reduces out. That uh, factor right there that reduces out creates an actual hole in the rational function. If you remember that technique where you graph the rational function and whenever you have this reducing, it creates a hole in the graph. That's why we're not able to actually substitute 2 in. So if we can reduce that out, then we can actually just use a substitution of that 2 into what's left over. So then we put 2 into what's left over, 2 plus 4, then we get 6. So that would be the answer for the limit of the original function after we've reduced out the rational, or reduced out the factor. So here's another example. So here's another example. Now for this one here, if we plug 2 into the denominator here, we can check it. We get 2q minus 7 times 2 plus 6, which is 8 minus, which is 0. So you can see our denominator again is going to be 0. So we're not going to be able to just to substitute. So we want to again try factoring the numerator and denominator. And so we have to recall some of our techniques on how to do that. If you can use grouping, then that'd be a great technique. So on the top here, we can try grouping two term, two, the first two terms together and the second two terms together and then keep going, but it doesn't work. Um, grouping does not work. And so then we can think about other methods of how to factor. And so we could use our calculator, how to find zeros of this graph. And find calculator uh, with a calculator and then we take our zeros and synthetic divide so here are is our coefficients so one of the zeros is negative three so I drop the one multiply by negative three add negative one multiply get three add negative two multiply get six add get zero so then I have this left over I have uh, x squared minus x minus two so then that factors to x minus 2 times x plus 1. And so that's the numerator. We have a x plus 3. That gave us the negative 3 over here. Then we had the x minus 2. And then we had the x plus 1. We can also factor the denominator the same way as looking for... So we can do the same thing for the denominator. So notice how I have the 0 x squared term when I'm going to synthetic divide here. Uh, negative 3, I think, was also a solution for this one. So 1 multiply negative 3, add stays negative 3, multiply get 9, add 2, multiply negative 6, add 0. And I'm left with uh, x squared minus 3x plus 2. And then that factors to x minus 2 times x minus 1. And so then our denominator here is x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. And so now we can look at our reducing. So x plus 3, x plus 3 redu reduces. We also have x minus 2, x minus 2. So we have two factors that reduce. So now we're just finding the limit as x approaches 2 of the remainder. What's left over here is x plus 1 over x minus 1. So we now you plug 2 in here, we get 3 over 1, which is 3. So that is the limit of the original function. So if we can straight up just factor it quickly, do that, but we might use some of our old techniques of synthetic division and our graphing to help us find zeros, which then help us factor it. Okay, some fractions cannot be reduced, um, but we can still rationalize as another technique. And so if we plug negative 3 in here, we just get a 0 in the denominator right away. But we can't reduce anything here. But we're actually going to do the opposite. We're actually going to try to put the square root back in the denominator. Uh, and to do that, we want to multiply the top and bottom 
by the conjugate of the top. So it's going to be the square root of x plus 7 plus 2. It's going to be the same thing on the denominator. Square root of x plus 7 plus 2 is multiplied. So when I FOIL the top, you have to FOIL the top. The square root of x plus 7 times the square root of x plus 7 is just x plus 7. Um, notice that these are different perfect squares in the middle here, so those that OI term is going to be 0. So then we just have negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4. So we get rid of the square root of the numerator this time instead of the, uh, we're typically doing that for the denominator. We're actually putting the root back in the denominator. So this is x plus 3 times the quantity of root x plus 7 plus 2. I'm not going to multiply it right away because if we look at this, what happens is we have on the top, this top right here is x plus 3. The bottom here is x plus 3, so those reduce out. So we end up getting the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 1 over the square root of x plus 7 plus 2. So what we did is we just put the square root back in the denominator. Now, the point of that is we no longer have that x plus 3 in the denominator, which gives us 0 for this limit. Uh, and so now I can actually substitute negative 3 into this. So direct substitution would be 1 over the square root of negative 3 plus 7 plus 2, which would be 1 over the square root of 4 plus 2, or 1 over 2 plus 2, which is 1 4. So that's going to be the limit of this original function. So when you have that radical in the numerator, whatever it may be, the uh, binomial in the numerator, we want, may want to multiply by the conjugates so we get rid of this x plus 3 in the denominator. So sometimes these techniques don't work, where you may want to look at the graph. Uh, but for this one, I think we can try something. Let's try a similar technique. Multiply by 1 plus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. So if we do that, we get the limit as x approaches 0. Uh, the numerator becomes 1 minus cosine squared x over uh, x times 1 plus cosine x. And so if you look at this, um, it still doesn't work because if we're going to plug 0 in for x and 0 times this quantity is going to be 0, we're going to keep 0 in the, in the denominator. Uh, we can't reduce this x out so in the numerator. There's not just an x there. And so what we might want to do is go to the graph. I just look at the graph, look at your graph, uh, and then the table, and figure out what values are uh, the function y getting close to as x gets closer and closer to 0. So it's periodic. I know the graph, if you're at your uh, graphing calculator, it's going to look like this. And so we're basically just trying to find as x is getting closer and closer to 0, from both sides, the graph is approaching what y value? It's approaching this value, which is a y value 0. So then I know that the limit of this function is going to be 0. So we're going to say it's going to be equal 0. So the graph and the table still are techniques that we may need to use. And for this one, when we graph this one, we actually get a graph where we have these two horizontal lines. So as x is approaching 0, we're actually approaching a positive 1 4 so here we have a y value that's going to be equal to 1 4 and this y value is equal to negative 1 4 and so the limit does not exist um, that's one of the rules does not exist for this function so there's another way to look at the problem we can define the problem or be more precise in the problem if we look at what's called a left and right handling so yesterday we discussed um, how when when there is no limit, um, but let's find a one-sided limit. A one-sided limit. And what this is is saying limit as x approaches c to the negative. Uh, the negative is from the left-hand side, and then uh, f of x would equal l1. So as x is coming from the left, so you're going to the right. Uh, what is the graph approaching? And then we also look at the limit as x approaches c from the right, so from the right going to the left, going to the actual uh, c value, what's the limit of that side? And we can compare the two sides. So for this one up here, we had from the positive side, so from the right-hand side up here, from the right-hand side over here, we'd have a limit of 1 fourth. 
the left hand side is down here on the graph the left hand side of our our zero value because we're finding the limit of it's negative one fourth so because these do not match the limit does not exist that's by rules that if and only if both left and right limits exist and are equal to L then we have the limit of that value but here we don't have them. they're not equal to each other so the limit does not exist but we do have a right hand limit and a left hand limit that we could write down for it. and this gives us a better idea of what we're approaching from both sides so for this one we can do a quick sketch um, you can look at your table, or graph, uh, kind of good review of graphing piecewise functions. So we're going to graph uh, x squared plus 1, which is a parabola quadratic, when x is less than 2. So there's 2. And so less than 2, I know I have up here would be my vertex. Vertex at 0, 1. If I plug in 1, I'm going to get 2. I plug in 2, I'm going to be able to get 5. Now, this is not an actual point in the graph, but it'll help us plot. I'm going to plot an open point up here at 5 because it helps me see the shape of the parabola. Negative 1 up here at 2, negative 2, I will have a point up here at 5. So, this will be my, my graph for the parabola, and then I can graph my other equation, my linear equation would be negative one half x plus six so my y intercept is six so I'm going to go down one right two and again it's not a point right here so I'm going to do an open circle and down one right two we're going to get this graph now the problem here is to try to find the limit as x approaches two so at two we are that does not exist at x equals two there is no answer you can see how they're not one equal to here but if we look at the left hand limit, we're approaching this value of 5. If you look at the right hand limit, we're also approaching 5. So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left equals 5. And the limit as x approaches 2 from the right is 5. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 2 is 5. So this does have a limit. And it will be 5 because the left and right hand limits are the same. Uh, even though it does not exist there, they will have a limit. So we'll call it good for 11 to A. These are different techniques that you need to be able to use algebraically to help find the limit.